In an exclusive interview two times now, former ISI boss Hamid Gul says he does not know Abdul Karim Tunda. Tunda had named Hamid Gul as his handler during his interrogation by the Delhi police. An exclusive news break coming right away. This Abdul Karim Tunda apparently used certain other names while he was operating in Pakistan. Do you, uh, if you have seen footage of this character, can you recollect? Because in all your interviews, you have come across as absolutely straightforward and straight talking. So we would be grateful if you would throw a correct picture onto the whole situation because. Uh, right now, this man seems to be an encyclopedia of a whole lot of contacts and information. So I don't think he would be completely out of mark in, in the context of naming his interaction with you. May have not been too many times, may have been on one or two occasions. But do you recall, because you seem to have close links with Hafiz Saeed, and he's interacted considerably with Hafiz Saeed and Zikrul Lakwi. I don't know. This is what he says, but Hafiz Saeed uh, uh, is a friend of mine, and uh, I I don't know this Tunda name. This is a very strange name to me. It has uh, come come across me first time, so I don't know at all. And uh, uh, this is called in the intelligence craft. It is called paper milling, and sometimes people are very good at it. They create stories which are phony stories but they would make you believe that they are correct. I think he is one of those characters. Personally, this is my opinion as an expert, but then it's only it needs investigation. You can ask Pakistan government to investigate. I will be prepared to go before any investigation team. Uh, if you form a joint investigation team with Pakistan, with the consent of Pakistan government, I even, I even am prepared to, to go before them. Uh, General, General Gold, sir, the other question is, the other question uh, that you said you have retired from service in 1992, but having retired from service as we know, as we know that even retired officers keep links both with their junior colleagues who later rise to high ranks like yourself, at the same time have considerable sway in a number of activities as advisors and otherwise. Now, are you claiming that since 1992 you have completely washed your hands from all military and uh, military intelligence activities, or do you still have any links and friends, and do you do some kind of advisory work, both for the government and others? None at all. I never turn back. Once I have left a place, I have left it for good. I never look back. Uh, but I am a free person, and I talk, I give my opinion, I talk uh, vocally about it, vociferously about it, what I feel strongly, that's my opinion, that's my right as a human being. And uh, I do make opinion in Pakistan. I am, I like to believe that I I am some Scott kind of a, an opinion maker. Beyond that, there is no role that I play. Sir, you have, you have also been on record to say, as against the view and the standard line from everybody in the Pakistani establishment, that Osama bin Laden's whereabouts are not known to them, but you have been on record to say that Pakistan successfully hid him for nine years. How were you so confident that Pakistan was able to hide him if you have no contacts with anybody in the intelligence agencies? No, that's what I have said, because if you... There are... Uh, assumptions. One assumption is that it wasn't Osama yes, bin Laden. And the second assumption is that it was Osama bin Laden. So if it was Osama bin Laden, then I'm right to say that and, and it, he had been hidden by the ISI, then credit goes to the ISI that they kept him out of the eyes of the Americans who were snooping around everywhere and they were prying eyes, were looking at everything in Pakistan, even at a golf ball. And Osama bin Laden was hidden from them. So that uh, is, in, in a way, it's a sort of a vicarious compliment to them. General Gul, uh, another question to you is, if, if you had nothing to do with Abdul Karim Tunda, of all the people over the years with the ISI or whoever, uh, who are, uh, you know, heads of the ISI chiefs, why would he name you? I don't really know because my name is very familiar in India. And I think it sells very well with the media. And so he may have used this because in any case, I said he's a paper mill. 
and uh, he wants to have people believe what he says is right. And uh, the most familiar name that occurred to him, I think, was mine. So he didn't hesitate to name me. Uh, General Gul, sir, another question. Did you did you come across a person called Sayyid Abdul Karim or Hakim Ji? Did anybody like that interact with you at any stage? No, 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 none, none whatsoever. No, no, I don't recall. Because these are the two aliases that uh, Abdul Karim Tunda has also used while uh, well, he claims when he was in Pakistan. Uh, but also there is a question, and that is that you claim to be an opinion maker. And you came to, uh, I mean, we all know that your, your opinion does carry a lot of clout in Pakistan and in the international media. So what is your opinion about the activities of the groups like lashkar e toiba the jamaat ud dawa and others do you feel they are now becoming a baggage and an embarrassment for pakistan or pakistan should continue to humor and harbor them even at the cost of international alienation no no i don't think i i don't contribute to that idea but they are a kashmiri group and kashmiri group have a right to fight for their liberation uh, they have a right, according to the United Nations resolution and according to the United Nations Charter, the oppressed nation have a right to rise in arm. So if they have risen in arm, it is uh, well within their right, according to the international law and the uh, norms of human behavior. Uh, but I don't support the, I don't support that Pakistan should get involved into it. In fact, I have always said that keep out of it. And your job is only to give diplomatic and political support, which Pakistan, unfortunately, is not doing enough. Uh, Pakistan, that's why what my criticism is about Pakistan. You should take a firm stand. You have a right. You are a party to it. It's a consensus resolution in Kash on Kashmir. Uh, and uh, both India and Pakistan had agreed to give right of self-determination to the people of Kashmir. This is a democratic demand. So I am not uh, stepping out of the domain of democracy. Sir, there is a... No, that, that point is, I mean, uh, in terms of pure academic argument, that is right. But A, lashkar e Toiba isn't exactly a Kashmiri group. They are more a Pakistani Punjabi group. In fact, in Pakistan, uh, very clear evidence has emerged in lots of writings by Pakistani scholars and also international scholars that they are now being referred sometime when they were hounded out of Punjab, they went and took refuge in the northwest frontier and other regions and they were called Punjabi Taliban. So I don't think lashkar e Toiba can be seen as a Kashmiri group. They are certainly supportive of Kashmir. They use Kashmir. They have been involved in fighting in Kashmir. But they are not necessarily an indigenous Kashmiri group. And as far as the UN resolutions are concerned, I think you are better informed than most others that the UN resolution was in three parts and part one and two were not entirely implemented. Though ceasefire was implemented, the evacuation and withdrawal from JNK was not done. Therefore, part three could never be implemented. So are you arguing that Pakistan is willing to accept part two of the UN resolution, which calls for Pakistan's withdrawal from the erstwhile territory of JNK before India can implement the right of self-determination? Two clarifications. First of all, the people who are uh, uh, linked with the Punjabi Taliban and they are hiding in our fight Fata area, they are lashkar e jangvi They belong to lashkar e jangvi and they were not participating in jihad in Afghanistan in, in Kashmir. Uh, so this is totally wrong. The second point is about uh, the withdrawal of troops. If you take my personal opinion, and I will not offer, you know, I, not, not in a position to offer opinion on behalf of the government of Pakistan, but yes, I would say that we should accept withdrawal from Kashmir. Why not? If we are expecting that Indians should withdraw, but it had to be done simultaneously. But do you see that happening at all, sir? I mean, there that's where the crux of the problem lies, that withdrawal never took place and therefore self-determination never happened. Yes, this is true, uh, self-determination. And Owen Dixon plan was the first one to come up. And in that also th there were things like division on the Chanab line, etc., which was not acceptable to the people of Kashmir. It would have been a violation of the UN resolution. 
but uh, let the people of kashmir decide i think that is the at the highest at the pinnacle of the values of democracy is the right of vote and kashmiri is asking for uh, asking for right of choice right to vote so we must let him let kashmiri have his right of choice that would uh, bring greater maturity to the indian democracy and that would bring peace in the region and there is so much to be gained by having peace for india for pakistan you can get to central asia uh, but not bypassing kashmir now india's effort is to bypass kashmir and get to central asia and uh, in post withdrawal of soviet uh, and um, sorry uh, nato uh, they they want to now uh, gain because the great enormous historic opportunity which exists and if i were to advise the indian policy makers please settle the kashmir dispute according to democratic principle and let's move ahead but without that it will not be possible to bring peace to the region so there is also an evolving view that the future security situation between india and pakistan in particular will evolve out of what happens in afghanistan and you are an expert on afghanistan having built up and trained the taliban from what i remember uh, from all the writings which have attributed your key role there so therefore pakistan does have to some extent a very serious legitimate argument about having a toe hold in afghanistan for reasons of its own historical importance to afghanistan the refugee problem pakistan's own security dilemma but the fact of the matter is that in the absence of pakistan getting the role that it wishes to play in afghanistan with other than india many other countries now having come to play a role there russia iran and china being some of them post 2014 do you feel pakistan getting more involved in afghanistan or pakistan pulling back and focusing on the core issue which continues to dominate pakistan strategic thinking which is kashmir uh no i think kashmir is linked it's not you can't like, see one in isolation from the other it's all interlinked but uh, as far as uh, afghanistan is concerned there is a 5000 year of history of of this region and in that uh, uh, obviously when issues are settled in afghanistan one way or, one way or another whole of south asia is very badly affected by it so uh, as toyn be said that uh, history is nothing but geography in motion and i think uh, afghanistan's geography is now in motion and we have to understand this we have to look deeply at it rather than today's situation tomorrow's situation we should be looking at the future and india and pakistan have got to come together to a consensus that we gain out of this position where american a superpower and a global imperial power the sole global imperial power is going out of the region it's an enormous opportunity I, my mind boggles at, at the thought of it what opportunities exist but then there are perils along with the opportunities and we have got to ward off the perils together we have to ward off the perils So last question to you and that is that as you said that if your advice was heard and I mean I'm hearing you very clearly on your advice on Kashmir and the UN resolutions which you have earlier articulated but more importantly Pakistan's armed forces as we understand have tried to adopt a doctrinal shift where they want to focus on threats within Pakistan because internal threats have now become a nuisance to Pakistan so therefore under the circumstances if you were to ask the Rawalpindi uh, generals to prioritize how would you suggest to them to prioritize to look at internal threats to look at kashmir to look at afghanistan all of to them together you can't as i said that you can't the security is a total concept it, it's not just in uh, one little segment but uh, right now i think the way indian armed forces are behaving and the way indian generals are now taking the better of their politicians I think this is uh, bad. Um, I'm, I'm sorry to say that, but for bad for India's democracy, uh, because generals have taken the bit in their mouth and they're running wild. So, see now, Nawaz Sharif. He was uh, he had declared a policy that he wants to lean towards India, and uh, obviously, not many people liked his uh, idea, but he took a very bold action. 
but who scuttled it? It is the Indian Armed Forces. Simply by creating a story out of those five people who were killed in uh, inside the line of Kashmir, well inside the line, the line of control. So who could have killed them? They were uh, in the past instances where core headquarters were involved. They were attacked. They were buildings attacked by the Kashmiri Mujahideen. But uh, there was no such hullabaloo as it has been created this time. Because I think the Indian um, uh, army and their generals and their air marshals and so on and so forth, they're becoming now uh, quite uh, headstrong. And they hold press conferences. And this is the style of America. When America goes and befriends the country, the first thing they do is they establish very close linkages with their military and they start giving ideas to their generals. They have done to us and they are doing to you now.